Okay, 60-40 ratio. Let's see what happens here. Hello again everyone, this video will be a continuation of my series on wood gasification. In my previous videos on this subject, a lot of you have expressed concern that I don't use flame arresters on the tubing coming to and from my gas storage tanks. A lot of you have been concerned that if oxygen were to get its way into the tank and mix with the wood gas, it could create a flammable mixture and cause an explosion if a flame were to travel back through the tubing and into the storage tank. So in this video, I'm going to test that and see how much danger I've actually been in by not using flame arresters. The way I'll do that is with this, which is basically like the gasometer that I built in my previous video, but I've made this one out of clear plastic. We'll be filling this with water and using it as a gasometer to inject incremental amounts of gas into the containers and then try to ignite it. We'll start with a little bit of wood gas, then inject a little bit of atmospheric air and a little more and a little more until we reach a flammable mixture. The way I will attempt to ignite these mixtures is with a pair of electrodes in the middle of the tank here, which are connected on the other end to a stun gun. So when I've injected various amounts of gas, I'll be able to see if it ignites with this electric arc. Now the first step is to fill my testing chamber with water so that we can evacuate all the oxygen from the top portion. So I'll go ahead and fill this to the brim. I've now removed as much air as possible from my test container and connected the input line from my gasometer. My gasometer that I built in my previous video is still charged with wood gas, so in order to inject wood gas into this container, all I should have to do is open the valve at the top. Now the question is, how much wood gas do I want to inject into this container? I think that is more than enough right there. Let's get my gasometer out of here so if this explodes, or rather when it explodes, I won't have a large supply of gas nearby. So we can see in here how much wood gas I've injected. There's about an inch of space here of gas. And that's how we'll be measuring this. We'll be measuring this by volume. So once I have another inch worth of air in this container, we can call it a 50-50 ratio of air to wood gas. And that's the camera running out of memory. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, brief interruption later and I'm back. The gas had slowly leaked out of this chamber in the couple days that I was gone, so I've refilled it and I've installed a Schrader valve on the end of the inlet line on this test chamber. This is the same type of valve that's on a tire, so if I use a small bicycle pump and connect it with this valve, this will be a great way to inject measured amounts of air into the test chamber as I increase the fuel to air ratio. Before I inject any additional air though, I'll go ahead and step behind this barrier that I've set up. I'll equip myself with some safety glasses and hearing protection, and I'll hit the igniter to see if the wood gas, as it is, with just trace amounts of oxygen inside, will ignite. All right, I've got the high-speed camera set up, I've got my safety gear on, so let's go ahead and hit the ignition and see what happens. Nothing. So what we'll try next is I've connected my bicycle pump to the test chamber and I'll inject about a half inch worth of air into this chamber. So we should be left with about two thirds wood gas to one third oxygen or one third atmospheric air. And we'll see if that's enough to create a flammable mixture. Okay, test two. And nothing. Okay, so two-thirds to one-third air is not enough. So we'll go up to a 50-50 ratio of wood gas to air and see what happens then. And nothing. Okay, so we are going to surpass a 50-50 ratio. 
Uh, let's go, I guess, to 75-25. I've just realized I don't actually need a bicycle pump to get air into this system because all I have to do is lift up on the chamber and then press in the valve stem with my fingernail and the weight of the water pulls air into the chamber. It doesn't actually need to be forced in. Okay, 25% wood gas, 75% air, and we'll test this. <laughs> oh, that did it. Okay, uh, is my chamber still intact? All right, got some water on the cameras. Oh, shoot. <sighs> well, I forgot to trigger the high speed, and my container is a little bit chipped. Uh, so I guess I'll try sealing the container with uh, maybe some, I don't know, super glue or uh, maybe hot glue. And we'll try this one more time and see if I can get it on high speed. Anyway, there was the magic number, 75% air to 25% wood gas, and we reached a flammable mixture. Okay, my container is all patched up with hot glue, so let's see if it is gas tight. All right, I've got the gasometer back here behind me and I've attached a little fill valve so that I can fill it right through the Schrader. I think that's a little bit better method than what I used the first time. So let's see, I'll connect this here and open the valve. Let's do a little more than an inch of wood gas this time. Let's do twice that much uh, because I wanna, get, I wanna get a good show when this does go off. And by using more, I'll narrow down the ratios a little more specifically when it does become ignitable. Now it looks to be about two inches. Let's get the gasometer out of here. Okay, test one, pure wood gas. Don't let me forget to trigger the high-speed camera when it goes off this time, please. Somebody tell me. Okay, here we go. Okay, I think that's enough to save that pure wood gas. Once again, not ignitable. 50-50 ratio. Let's see. I'm gonna bring it up in smaller steps this time. Let's try starting at a 60-40 ratio of air to wood gas. I'll just inject a little bit more air into the system and see what happens. Let's see what happens here. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. It took a minute. Oh, trigger, okay. Did I get it? I got it, all right, sweet. <laughs> Okay. Oh, there's just water vapor in the air everywhere. Oh, I think the container... No, it might not be beyond repair this time. There's a big crack uh, taken out of the bottom of the container that you can see there. But I think that that'll be below the water line. So I think I can try this one more time. Okay, this time I've added even more air. I'm probably at an 80-20 ratio of air to wood gas now. The reason I've done this is because there's more than just a ratio where a gas will be ignitable. There is an ideal ratio where it will be the most ignitable. It will be downright explosive. And we'll see if I got a little closer to that ratio now that I've surpassed the ratio where I know it's at least ignitable. All right, here we go. Okay, so 80-20, I think that was actually a little bit weaker than uh, the 75-25 ratio that I did at the start. So 75-25 is probably close to the ideal, and anywhere above 50% is where I'm going to start to get concerned. <laughs> oh, this is fun. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Well, conclusion of this video, now that this container is, yeah, it's done. <laughs> um, I think I don't have to worry about flame arresters on my wood gas storage tanks. Not unless I really screwed up and somehow let just as much air into the container as I did wood gas. Of course, to be safe, I'm not gonna try to let any air mix with my wood gas inside their storage vessels at all. It's not a bad idea to add flame arresters, but for this, I think it's a little bit unnecessary. I hope you enjoyed this video. I wanna thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy seeing me do silly experiments like this. I still read all of my comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you have anything to say, any suggestions for future projects or feedback on this video, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs>